This is the Behind the Line podcast, and this is Pacific Northwest Headline News in three minutes for Wednesday, April 6, 2022. Seattle Police Chief Adrian Diaz was on ABC News last night talking about the crime surge in Seattle. He referred to it as a public health crisis, and that's how they were addressing it, as a public health crisis. And they were trying to find ways to get the help people need other than an armed law enforcement officer. Well, sir, what you have is a crime problem, a criminal problem, a judge and prosecutorial problem, or the lack thereof. Everything in Seattle is open game, no consequences. Until that changes, this isn't going to change. And just to put some numbers onto the chief's public health crisis, Seattle gunshot victims are up 171% from last year. Shots fired up 95% from last year. And car thefts up 95, correction, 90% compared to last year. And to go along with that, the... Seattle Public Safety Index, which is posted on Twitter each week by the Seattle Police Officers Guild, shows the safety rating of the city right now, a ranking of 25 out of 100, which is an all-time low, down from 30 out of 100 last week. This draws on two major factors, the number of deployable officers and the rate of violent crimes. Between 2020 and November 2021, over 325 officers left the department. 43 more have left just since the start of this year. The city is in dire need. The latest figures show 885 deployable officers. The Guild said adequate staffing would be closer to 1,400 officers. If you want something done about the crime, Chief Diaz, maybe you should hire some more cops. And the Portland, Oregon Community Safety Division released its first annual report amid spiking gun violence. Nearly two dozen people have been shot and killed in the city of Portland so far in 2022. The person who oversees this uh, safety division, Mike Myers, said that despite more than 400 shootings in the first few months of 2022, the city is doing a lot to end gun violence, outlined in the Safety Division's first annual report. Myers pointed to millions of dollars awarded to community-based organizations operating in neighborhoods impacted by the gunfire. Myers is also proud of the expansion of the Park Ranger program and the official launching of the Portland Police Bureau's Enhanced Community Safety Team and Focused Intervention Team. Well... Obviously, it's not doing anything to curb the violence. More than 400 shootings, two dozen killed. You can't throw money at stuff, but this is what politicians do. And, and they like to use their big words and their big groups and meetings and all this garbage that never amounts to anything. Enhanced community safety team and focused intervention team. Wow. And it's not doing a thing. Cops on the street will, though. So right along with these idiots in Seattle and Portland, I'm going to read this story out of California. So yeah, this is going long today. Sorry. I'm going to read this whole story from Fox News, and I think you need to hear it. This is about Hannah Tubbs, a 26-year-old trans California child molester sentenced to a juvenile facility for assaulting a 10-year-old girl in a bathroom in 2014. Now has been accused of attacking an even younger girl just one year earlier. Explicit court documents obtained by Fox News Digital shows Tubbs, then using the name James, was accused of sexually molesting a 4-year-old girl at a California library in August 2013, while her mother was browsing books just a few aisles over. The alleged attack inside the Northeast Bakersfield Library took place near locked bathrooms. The victim told police she escaped when Tubbs went to retrieve a bathroom key, and she said Tubbs exposed himself and touched her. The girl told police he ordered her just do it. She was shouting and crying hysterically and pointing at her mouth and private parts when she found her mother, according to the documents. 
The girl and her mother identified Tubbs wearing a ripped black shirt and shorts with blonde hair as a suspect when responding officers arrived. Tubbs took a plea deal in the 2014 assault case after Los Angeles District Attorney George Gascon's office declined to transfer it to an adult court last year, a development that prompted outrage over the lenient sentence. Following the 2014 assault case, explicit Los Angeles jailhouse recordings emerged in February showing Tubbs gloating over the light sentence she he received for the 2014 case involving a 10-year-old victim assaulted in a Denny's restroom. It boasted that nothing would happen to it after it pleaded guilty to Democrat Gascon's policies and laughed that it won't have to go back to prison or register as a sex offender. It also made explicit remarks about the victim that are unfit to print and instructed its father to begin referring to it with female pronouns. So now they're going to put me in with other trannies that have seen their cases like mine or with one tranny like me that has a case like mine, Tubbs says. So when you come to court, make sure you address me as her. Tubbs did begin identifying as a female after being arrested last year, according to prosecutors. It received a sentence of two years at a juvenile facility because the case remained in juvenile court. Adhering to one of the progressive prosecutors' day one directives barring children from being tried as adults, it could serve as little as six months and won't have to register as a sex offender. Are you kidding me? It's sickening. It's disgusting. Gascon has since backtracked on some of his controversial directives, admitting that certain charges should be reviewed on a case-by-case basis. You think? Like every responsible office, we learn as we go. And in the meantime, you're hurting people that you're supposed to be protecting. Take feedback from the community and make necessary adjustments based on our experience and the complex nature of this work, he said. Adding that a small number of cases necessitate flexibility denied to his prosecutors under his edicts. Specifically, we learned a lot from the Hannah Tubbs case about the need for a policy safety valve. He also admitted that Tubbs went on after the 2014 attack to commit other offenses, including one in which DNA evidence linked her to the Denny's assault. Um, Yeah, as a prosecutor, you shouldn't be learning as you go. You should already have that knowledge when you get that job. This is what it's like in these blue cities. Crime and criminals are just allowed to run rampant. And we all get to take the brunt of it. And it's just getting worse and worse and worse. The only way to stop this is to stop electing these crazy fools and put some people in office that have some common sense. The West Coast social experiment is over and it failed. This has been Pacific Northwest Headline News in eight and a half minutes. For more, visit BehindTheLinePodcast.com. Thanks for listening.